Find the inverse of the following matrix using row reduction. Our matrix is A equal to row 1 is 1, 1, 1, row 2 is 1, 0, 1, row 3 is 1, 0, 0. Now, what we're trying to do here, I'm trying to find a matrix X such that A times X equals the identity. The long way to do this is to break it up into three systems of linear equations. So the idea here would be for this matrix X, I have three columns. So I could have A times column one equals first column of the identity matrix, A times column two equals second column of the identity matrix, A times column three equals third column of the identity matrix. There's no need to separate all that out. So the way we do a row reduction, I take our original matrix, we augment with the entire identity matrix. Now, we want to perform row operations. Our target is to turn matrix on the left into the identity matrix. Our pattern, the idea is going to be, okay, in the two by two case, you have the horseshoe. In the three by three case, same idea. You're going to do a loop, and the idea is when you get to your lower left-hand corner, you're going to detour to the center to make it a 1. So we're just going to start with a 1, 0, 0, detour to a 1, back to 0, 1, and then 0, 0, 0. So just a big circle. Okay, let's take a look at how we should start. First thing we note, okay, if you take a look at your rows, we want to get a 1 up here, and we certainly have that. But if we're doing a little bit of foreshadowing, it's going to make our arithmetic a lot easier if we use row 3, where we have row 1. The idea there is going to be, if I have to add multiples of row 1 to another row, those zeros are going to do absolutely nothing for the columns that they're in, which means less chance of making a mistake. So first operation, switch row 1 with row 3. So we do that for the entire row. And that's how things change. Now, we note, okay, we have a 1 where we want it. So I want to put a 0 in both places beneath that 1. So we'll do both of those at once since it's easy enough. We're not going to be mixing row 2 and row 3. No problem. Operation, we take row 2, subtract off row 1, put it back in row 2. Take row 3, subtract off row 1, put it back in R3. So we're not doing anything to row one actually, that stays as it is, we're changing row two and row three. Now, let's take a look. So I take row two, okay, that's gonna be one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I'm gonna subtract off row one. So that's gonna be minus one, zero, 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 minus one. We add down the columns, I get zero, zero, one, 0, 1, minus 1, and that's my new row 2. Same idea applies for row 3. We put in our row 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So it's coming from here. Subtract off row 1. Same subtract row 1 as we had in the previous step. So I'll have minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. We add down. That gives me 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, minus 1. That's my new row three. If you notice, what do we have now? All right, we want one, zero, zero. I want to detour to the middle to get a one there. All right, there's no way I'm going to be able to turn that zero to a one without doing something funny, but the easy way to get that one there is to switch row two and row three. So that's our next step. So no arithmetic needed, you're just switching rows. That gets us to this matrix here. If you notice, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, that's good. Get that 1 in the lower right-hand corner for free. So my next step is going to be to turn this 1 here into a 0. The way I do that, we take row 2, subtract off row 3. That's not going to change row 3 at all, just going to change row 2. Okay, we could go through all this step here, but we'll skip that. Okay, the idea is... You get these two, then this one, straight shot. So, okay, we're gonna subtract off row three. So we have a minus one gives me a zero. Zero goes to that to give me a one. 
Minus one gives me a minus one. Minus one makes that a one, gives me a zero. So we wind up with, okay, our final augmented matrix. We have the identity. What shows up here is gonna be our A inverse. Now, of course, we check our work. The idea is that A times A inverse gives me the identity. A inverse times A also gives me the identity. I could check either one of those to check my answer. So we'll do A times A inverse, see what comes out. When we do that, what do we get? Okay, well, if you work out using your matrix multiplication, you're gonna see when you do your nine operations, you're gonna get the identity matrix. So our check works.